All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm driving a 1987 Pontiac Fiero. Behind me is a 2.8 liter V6. Down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now the Fiero has always been a car that I've lusted after for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I always thought they looked cool and how can you ever possibly deny pop-up headlights. So let's get back to that 2.8 liter V6. Well, this is a higher output V6 than what was shoved in a lot of other Chevy vehicles from the time. I'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen. Now the torque is what's really important because you could get this car with a four cylinder, although the four cylinder was named the Iron Duke, which is the best name for an engine ever given. This is not the Iron Duke, this is the six cylinder, but I get a lot more torque than the four cylinder and this is what you want. You want the V6. Nothing really too crazy. Of course, I don't want to beat on the car too much, but the interesting thing is that the sound of it, the feeling of it, it feels all very calculated, which GM of the 80s and 90s doesn't strike me as a very calculated business. It doesn't feel like the engines that were to come a decade later in the 90s that were just bleh, 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 bleh. This actually feels a little bit athletic, a little bit spry. You know, this was its kind of final years of kicking it and being a fun engine until in the 90s, everything just got lumpy and rounded and slow. And ain't that a metaphor for life? Like I said, paired to it, five speed manual transmission. The shifter is pretty tall. It's not super exact. Pedal feel is good. And once it's actually clunking into gear, it's really nice. The gears are very, very close together. It really feels almost like it has a short throw shifter without having a short throw shifter. And last but not least, of course, the Fiero is rear wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. This is where we're really gonna start noticing just how 80s this car really is. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of different gauges. On the left is my speedometer. I have my odometer. In the center, I have my coolant temperature and fuel. And on the right, I have my tachometer with a little warning zone, kind of reminds me of like Top Gun or something. On the steering wheel, I have the Fiero logo as well as my horn buttons. Nothing really too interesting about the horn. To the left of me, I have vents. Now, the interesting thing about this is that the whole instrument cluster is like its own separate box. You can actually look around the side of it and see almost completely behind it. It's so in your face and so bolted in there, so 80s. It reminds me a lot of the Fox bodies of the time. On the door, I have the Fiero logo, manual mirrors, and my manual windows. Nothing really too crazy there. In the center, I have my battery voltage gauge and my oil pressure gauge. Very interesting location to put those two right sort of in the very center where you would expect like a radio. Down below that, I have my climate control vents and then my actual climate controls themselves. Very, very simple here. You slide it over cold or hot. You have the buttons. They kind of remind me of like the 80s radio dials for like bass and uh, equalizer. That's what I'm thinking of. They look like equalizers, but it's actually for the air conditioning and heat. Then I have an aftermarket radio. Of course, uh, the radios just from the eighties don't really keep up with modern stuff. So this does have a CD player, things like that, and an aux in, things like that. However, this was not factory for the Fiero. So I can't really comment on the factory Fiero radio. However, I do have speakers in the headrests which need to make a comeback in cars. I have headrest speakers and I absolutely love it. We were listening to some synth wave before I started filming and uh, man, does it fit the car well. Man, does it fit the car well. Then I do have a little coin holder. This is an aftermarket piece from AT&T. However, it is period correct. AT&T was really in their heyday during the late 80s, early 90s. Then I have the shifter. The shifter looks kind of like it's out in the middle of nowhere, which is pretty typical GM you know, uh, Camaros, uh, F-body Camaros are like this. Um, and then I have dual ashtrays. If you were ever curious, if nothing else told you that this was an 80s car, the dual ashtrays should have been a big giveaway. Then I do actually have the little shift pattern down below on the center console. I really like that. Sort of adds a, you know, manual driver's car feeling to this car. Then I have my cigarette lighter. Now the seats are very, very comfortable. If GM knew anything in the 80s and the 90s and even the early 2000s, it was comfortable flipping seats. I mean, I can and probably will sleep in this car. It's just 
that comfy. It's really, really that good. Of course, I don't have back seats, although there was a Fiero concept car that had four seats. Hopefully, we'll maybe see that in the future. But the last thing about the interior is I do have this manual sunroof I can pop up if I'd like. Very nice, gives you a little bit of ventilation, adds a little bit more atmosphere to the Fiero, makes it feel a little bit nicer, and I really, really enjoy that. Now we have to talk about the looks. I love the look of the Fiero. I mean, how 80s is this? It sort of has that snub nose, it's a notch back. Um, if you got the GT, it had a little bit different of a back. Now this car was actually owned by my friend Austin's grandfather. He purchased this brand new. He actually ordered this car. And so he got all of the GT bits and parts on it, except for the actual body itself. The GT had a slightly different rear end. Austin's grandfather, Bob, wanted the notchback. He preferred the notchback look. So that's what he got. I think that's so cool that he ordered this from the catalog. And that's what, it, that's what the ending point of this car is. First of all, well, first of all, I want to talk about the fact that everyone gives this car kind of a little bit of grief. This car is an absolute blast, an absolute riot to drive, not only in a time capsule sense, but even modern today, it's still a fun, fun car. It's a Fiero. And so I don't think the Fiero deserves the crap that it gets. But second of all, this is an absolute time capsule. Like I said, Austin's grandfather picked up this car in 1986 and drove it until he passed. But this car is so 80s. He ordered it from a catalog. Who does that anymore? There wasn't a website where you could pick out what features you wanted and have it shipped to your house. No, you had to go in, you had to sit with a guy named Dan or Craig or Steve. You had to sit down with a thick brochure and say, all right, I want this, I want that, don't want that, want it this color. And then Steve would have to fill out a little piece of paper and he would send it to Pontiac and they would build a car based off of what you told him over the course of three hours and four cups of coffee. And let's be honest, a handful of cigarettes. That's what the 80s were and this is so, mm, okay. This is what I always say about 80s cars, and this is why I love this car so much. The 80s, I have this conversation all the time with people. And they're like, why are 80s cars so good? Why are 80s cars so special? And I always, always, always say, take a look at what drugs are popular. In the 80s, it's very popular to do cocaine, uppers, uppers, uppers. The 80s were about feeling things. I wanted to feel everything. In the Air Tonight is about this feeling of regret and remorse. The music, the colors, the colors are so vibrant, so, so beautiful, so in your face. It was just an overload of emotions. Nowadays, every car looks the same. Every car is rounded. Look at the drugs we take. We're all on antidepressants. We're all on numbing medication, whether that be Xanax so we don't feel our anxiety, antidepressants so we don't feel our depression, Advil so we don't feel our headaches. We don't want to feel right now. No one wants to feel things. We just want to get by. But no, the 80s, the 80s embraced that feeling, embraced emotions. If you love someone, you drove out in the middle of the night in the pouring rain because you couldn't reach them on the phone. So you had to go see them pre-internet. Things weren't as easy. And so things took passion. I'll say that again. Things weren't easy. So things required passion cars sometimes wouldn't start. So you kind of had to put a little bit of labor into it if you wanted that luxury of being able to travel far distances in short amounts of time. If you wanted to talk to someone, you had to call them on the phone. You had to hope that they were home. No one had cell phones. You just had to hope and pray that they were home. And if you didn't, maybe you'd get in your car and drive to their house. And if they still weren't home, you'd figure something else out. You had to give effort into the things you cared about. I care about my friends. I really do. I love my friends dearly, but I just have to open my phone, my little pocket computer, hit three buttons, and then they know that I care about them, and then we go upon our day. That, that's it. But the 80s, man, things meant things. And this Fiero, no matter how much it gets ripped on by people, this car makes me feel things. Good and bad, but I'm feeling. I'm feeling. That's why I love 80s cars, and that's why I love the Fiero. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Austin for letting me take out this car. I know 
This car means a lot to him. Like I said, his grandfather ordered this car out of a catalog and it's been in the family ever since then. And he still drives it, he still loves it. And now I get why. The Fiero is a glass case of emotions. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys learned something about the 1987 Pontiac Fiero. But don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.